BC today. It is Thursday, uh, April the 11th, and uh, it's great to be with you here again uh, today. And uh, uh, what a difference a day makes. Although markets didn't move a whole lot today, the Dow actually closed down a point or two, uh, basically unchanged on the day. But the S&P and the NASDAQ were both higher. The S&P was up 0.8, roughly 0.75, sorry. And the NASDAQ was up about 1.6% on the day. So um, I'll call it modestly positive on the day following yesterday's sell-off. And we got some better than expected PPI, producer price index numbers today um, that were a little bit better. So yesterday, CPI disappointed by one-tenth and markets kind of did what they did today. PPI, which is an input wholesale measurement of inflation, rose at 0.2% when 0.3% was expected. So it was a tenth better, um, at least on headline. Poor was only 0.1% for the month. So both good numbers. I mean, I my takeaway with it, and let me go back, my, my inside of those numbers, uh, the goods component deflated slightly, and the services component um, was a 0.3% for the month, which is the second month in a row, but it's down from 0.6 in January. So what, what are all those decimal points, to decimals mean? Basically, um, the consumer side yesterday showed inflation a little higher than expected. We talked about that, I think, pretty well. But the producer side today, the input side, show, didn't confirm it or reaffirm, I guess I should say, the, those, those numbers. Um, so markets felt a little better today. Although interest rates did not change today. So we had a big run up yesterday. The 10 year was up 18 basis points. Today it was actually up again one basis point. Um, so the reason I, I, so all that to say, you know, the, the numbers are slightly conflicting, but, um, but really it's just, it's not ever going to be a linear path. The, the numbers are not going to just go in one direction. You're going to have different months where part of it goes up a little more than others and so on and so forth. But over time, we want to see that trend going lower. And I, I believe that we are. That all said, I put a chart in today's DC Today to show you where rate expectations have moved um, because they've moved pretty substantially, even just since the beginning of the year. Beginning of the year, we were expecting by the end of this year, Fed funds would be all the way down to three and a half. Now we're expecting Fed funds to just be down to four and three quarters. And I'm saying this is all a good thing. Why? Because markets have fully digested all of this. Yesterday, those Fed futures expectations significantly moved uh, the, the other way. Um, you know, June is now a 75% chance that they will not change rates. Um, and then July is just a 50-50. And then, you know, these further along the path of the year, the expectations are much higher. So significantly higher. So I say that is a good thing because markets have been able to withstand all of that. We still have unemployment that's low. We still have positive economic data. We've got earnings that are starting to pop out just now, um, particularly tomorrow with the financials start to, start to kick off. Um, so those are all good things. And in the bar, the expectation is not so great on rates, but we've been able to withstand it. And the world didn't end and everything's actually going, going just fine, so to speak. Um, so take that for what it is. I prefer a bar that it, or, or an expectation that is a dismal one. And we have the chance of, of coming ahead versus one that's expecting, you know, 150 basis points of rate cuts in order to just keep everybody happy. Um, so I take all that as, as, uh, as a positive. And then the last thing is, I do still think, regardless of where Fed futures expectations are, that they're going to start talking about the balance sheet very soon. I don't know if it'll be May, but I'd be pretty surprised if it wasn't at least in June. Um, uh, and I think that is significant. And I think that'll be supportive of markets, frankly. When they start when they start talking about that, um, we also had initial jobless claims today come in better than expected. We were thinking two seventeen, they came in at two eleven, so fewer people filing for unemployment. We'll take it; it's always good um, on the uh, on the employment picture. And um, and so you know, all in all, you know, decent day in markets. I there was a question and answer section that uh, I responded to from a new, actually, prospective client that I spoke to yesterday in the state of Montana, lovely people. Um, but the idea was around, um, you know, a family office and family foundation uh, that they've been running very successfully. Um, so this is these are sizable, you know, you know, uh, asset figures that we're talking about, call it mid 10, or I'm sorry, mid eight figure numbers. Um, but that they still were having problems getting deal flows, you know, having access to private 
real estate transactions, you know, even, you know, certain alternative investments because they're, um, you know, they have high minimums, but it's not just that there's a due diligence process that has to go into them. It's a tough landscape to navigate on your own. And they were having issues with just getting a real proactive response on their tax planning side, because again, they're outsourcing it. They're hiring an outside CPA and they're having the same issue on the estate planning side. And so the Q and A was how can TPG help based on what, what we've told you. And that's why it exists. The family office was built to cater to those types of the AUM figures. Um, if you've got somewhere north of $500 million and you've got your own family office, I think you can start to put together some of the pieces in house. I, I do, but I still don't even think you would quite get there to what we can offer. So with that, I'm actually going to let you go here for the day. As always, I do appreciate you listening. I wish you all a very fun, full, uh, fun filled weekend watching the masters that just started today. I know I hopefully, uh, will get to watch a little bit some on the weekends. Uh, tomorrow we have your dividend cafe in your inbox. And I also added the link in there about what our vision is for adding the two properties of DC today and dividend cafe together, because Dave and I are very excited about what it will bring to you. It's a fresh new look. I think you will like it. Um, and so there's a link there that describes some of the, some of the new features that we'll have for you very soon. But with that, I'll let you get into your evening and uh, wish you all a good night and good, uh, good weekend. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.